نحمد و نسلی علی رسول الکریم اما بعد یو کین ریکال وی ور ایٹ سورت شمس لاسٹ نائٹ وی ہیڈ ریڈ ٹین آیات آؤٹ آف ففٹین ریسٹ آف دی فائیو آیات اسٹل ریمین ٹو بی ریڈ اینڈ ٹرانسلیٹڈ اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم کذب الصمود بتغواہا اذن بعص اشقاہا فقال لہم رسول اللہ ناقت اللہ و سقیاہا فکذبوہ فعقروہا فدمدم علیہم ربہم بذنبہم فسواہا ولا یخاف عقباہا صدق اللہ العظیم One thing I told you before is that from Surah Al-Muzzammil till the end of the Qur'an, all these surahs are in perfect pairs. But at some places you'll find two pairs can be grouped together to make a subgroup. And this is the first example. Surah Al-Shams and Surah Al-Layl, they are a pair. Surah Al-Duha and Surah Al-Inshirah, they are a pair, but all four of them go to make a subgroup. There is one subject which develops gradually in these four surahs. I told you that in Surah Al-Shams, there are eight ayat of oath, but the reality or the statement on which these oaths have been taken by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالشَّمْسِ وَضُحَاهَا وَالْقَمَرِ إِذَا تَلَاهَا وَالنَّهَارِ إِذَا جَلَّاهَا وَالْلَيْلِ إِذَا يَخْشَاهَا وَالسَّمَاءِ وَمَا بَنَاهَا وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا تَحَاهَا وَنَفْسٍ وَمَا سَوَّاهَا فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا Now that statement comes قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ the one who purifies his soul is successful. And the one who buries it in dust is unsuccessful. Now, we have been translating this taskiya by the word purification. Actually, it's very hard to translate many fundamental terms of Quran into some one word of English language. It's very difficult. Taskiyah doesn't mean only purification. It means purifying something in order that it should develop. This word, you know, is applied by the Arabs, Bedouin Arabs, to the function of a gardener. When he enters his garden, some of the plants he has himself sowed either for flowers or for fruit. But around those plants he finds grass has grown up, other unwanted vegetation is there. So what's the result? Whatever is the nourishment in the soil is now shared by this also. It's not all going to the plant which you have sown. In the same way, the oxygen from the air that is also being shared. So he removes all these things. This is called Taskiyah. Because they are hampering the growth of that plant which he had sown in order that it should grow up, be mature, bear either fruits or flowers. So man actually is a plant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has planted it. And he wants to see it flourishing, growing. But what type of growth? Not the growth of an animal. His growth as vice student of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who reflects the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his personality. So this process to remove all the hindrances in the way of the spiritual development of a human being. It is taskiyah. Qad aflaha man zakkaha. Only that one is successful who has really Purified his soul, developed his soul, his ana, his khudi. 
وچ علامہ اقبال کا تعمیر خودی کنسٹرکشن آف یور سیلف قد افلح من زکاہا و قد خواب من دساہا اینڈ آئی ٹولڈ یو دسا یا دسو ان عربک مینس ٹو بری سم تھنگ ان دس ہینڈ دس یو نو گیم ان قرآن فار دوز عرب بڈوینس ہو یوز ٹو بری دیئر فیمیل چائلڈس ڈاٹرس اے لائف ام یدس ہو فت تو غاب ہی کیپٹ آن تھنکنگ شوڈ آئی کیپ ہیم کیپ ہر ود می ڈس پائٹ دس ہمیلیشن اور آئی شوڈ بری ہر سے دس سا یا دس سو دس از اٹ وقت خواب امن دس ساہا اف یو کان ٹیک کیئر آف دیٹ ریئل ریئل سیلف آف یورس یو آر اونلی ٹیکنگ کیئر آف دی اینیمل سیلف آف یورس دی اینیمل ایسپیکٹ آف یور ایگزٹینس then this animal existence of yours becomes like a grave in which that spirit is buried only this grave is mobile it is moving it's not fixed at one place but every human being then becomes a mobile grave of his real spiritual identity and self now this regards mainly personal and individual purification and development of the ego or development of the self but now we come to the collective level human society this also behaves in the same way if there is no arrangement of a purification of that society and that nation that people that community it is doomed so a process has to continue which we call amr bil maruf nahi anil munkar at the collective level this enjoining upon people whatever is good and forbidding them from whatever is wrong it is actually the purification of the society this process has to continue if this society is to live as a healthy society if this process comes down then the society is doomed and then allah subhanahu wa taala sends a devastating chastisement and they are finished so one example all you know the messengers of allah who came they were doing this purifying trying to purify the nation purifying the the society purifying the community from the evils and ills moral ills or you know transgressions against allah subhanahu wa taala but if they failed actually they didn't fail the society or the community or the nation failed then a devastating chastisement of allah came and they were destroyed one example is quoted here kazabat samud o betahwa the samud belied the truth in their insurgence and transgression hazrat saleh علیہ السلاۃ والسلام was sent to them but this nation failed ism ba'sa ashqa now to cut a long story short when you know that she camel was given to them as a very big sign of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at their demand but then you know one of the chiefs who was the most wicked most wretched chief he rose up to kill the she camel faqala lahum rasulullah naqat allah wa suqiya the messenger of allah warned them beware it's the camel of allah it's the she camel of allah don't touch it la tabassuha bi su'in at another place we have read naqat allah wa suqiya and you know keep it stern of drinking water don't touch it with any bad intention but for kazabu ho fa karua but then they belied him and killed her fa dam dama alaihim rabbuhum bi zambihim so their lord crushed them for their sin fa sawaha and levered them to the ground or another meaning is made them all equal what does it mean there were rich there were rich there were poor there were the leaders there were the 
led common people but when this chastisement comes you know then all are equally involved in it inflicted by it afflicted by it so we have that ayah in surah al-anfal wa taqu fitnatan la tusibanna allazina zalamu minkum khassa beware of that chastisement that comes if it comes then not only those who are involved actually in these sins not only they are punished others are also punished because they were guilty of not purifying their society at only one place we find in surah al-araf those who till the last end go on yamuruna bil ma'ruf wa yanhauna 'anil munkar they continue their struggle to enjoin upon whatever is good and to forbid people from whatever is wrong they are saved only otherwise whether people were actually involved in that sin or not both are included in the collective chastisement that comes now a little distraction here this role that was being played by the prophets and the messengers of allah subhanahu wa taala has now by assigned after the institution of prophethood and messengerhood having come to an end in the person of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam this role has been assigned collectively to the ummah of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam for all times to come for the whole of humanity kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lin nas ta'muruna bil ma'ruf wa tanhauna 'anil munkar wa tu'minuna billah if we don't perform that duty then we are doomed then we deserve the chastisement of allah subhanahu wa taala rehmate hai teri aghyar ke kashanon par aur barf girti hai to bechare musalmanon par why we deserve it you are not doing your job you have become just a nation like the other nations of the world you are rather humiliated nation having no respect in the community of the nations nobody asks you any opinion in any international matter kasnami pursad ke bhaiya ki isti who you are nobody asks you zore bata le hum zillat wal maskanat wa ba'u bi ghadab min allah now from this collective do only those people can hope salvation and saving by allah subhanahu wa taala who exert up to their utmost in discharging this duty of amr bil ma'ruf and nahyan munkar only they can hope that is why we have found that ayah also in the same surah al imran wal takum minkum ummatun yaduna ila al khair wa yamuruna bil ma'ruf wa yadhauna 'anil munkar wa ulaika humul muflihun only these people who keep engaged in this three item agenda calling mankind to good yaduna ila al khair wa yamuruna bil ma'ruf and joining upon them whatever is good wa yanhauna 'anil munkar and forbidding them from whatever is wrong whosoever continues continues continue, whether someone listens or not they don't worry they don't have to worry they have to discharge their duty but they can earn salvation for them at least for themselves ulai kahum al muflihu wala yakhaf uqbaha the last aya allah doesn't fear its consequences you know it happens in collective affairs supposing there is a king and he sees some of his chieftains or some of his subordinates he is doing something wrong but if he is if i touch him if i bring him to book there might be a big turmoil he has supporters so he has to think twice as we have read in suratul suratul mumin Firaun couldn't do anything. He wanted to kill, kill Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, but when that a moment from Ali Firaun stood up and he gave that sermon, you know, he was he couldn't do, although he was the person claiming to be God. Another book will Allah. 
بٹ اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ کیئرس فار نن ولا یا خاف اقباح ہی ڈزنٹ ہیو ٹو فیئر دیٹ دیر کین بی ریبیلین دیر کین بی سم یو نو ان ٹورڈ ریزلٹس ان پلیزنٹ تھنگ مائی ہیپن نو نو ہی کین ڈو وٹ ایور ہی لائز ہی ڈیویسٹیٹڈ اینڈ ڈسٹرائڈ دی ہول نیشنس اینڈ ہی ڈزنٹ ہیو ٹو فیئر دیر سم تھنگ رانگ کین اپیئر ناؤ صورت اللہ بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم واللیل اذا یخشا والنہار اذا تجلا وما خلق الزکر والانسا ان سعیکم لشتا صدق اللہ العظیم By the night when it covers the whole world and shrouds in darkness والنہار اذا تجلا and by the day when it shines and brightens وما خلق الذکر والانثا and by him who created the male and the female or by the male and female and the way he created them this ayah as i told you twice in surah al shams this can be translated in two ways now there are two sets day night opposing each other in the same way male female different opposite sexes in the same way in nasayakum lashatta the result of what you are doing is going to be different everybody is striving and working hard from morning till evening someone someone is when he returns home in the evening in addition to being tired and exhausted he has brought a big load of sins also with him a big load of divine chastisement also the other one is he also labored and worked but he brought home forgiveness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala This is the exact translation of a hadith. The Prophet says, Allah says, Kullu nafsi yagdu. Every human being, when it is morning for him, till evening, fabai'un nafsahu. He sells himself. Someone is selling his physical energy, working. Someone is selling his mental faculty, his intelligence, some technical know-how, and so on and so forth. You are selling yourself. From morning till evening. Kullu nafsin yagdu fa ba'i'un nafsahu. Fa mawte quha wa mubi quha. But the result is different. Someone comes home with a big load of sins also. He remained involved in haram, in interest, in usury, in gambling, in telling a lie, and this thing and that thing. And someone comes home, Mu'atakoha, he has got his neck freed from the fire of the hell. So these are the two destinations to which you can go. Now, in Nasayakum Lashatta, this is book Sab Alay, on which you know these three ayat of oaths, they prove. Just as the difference in the day and the night, one layl is ayaksha, one nahar is ata jalla. And the difference between the male and the female, wa ma khalaq al-zakara wal-unsa in the sayyakum lashatta. Now this is the most important place in the Quran. Now this qad aflaha man zakkaha wa qad khaba man dasaha. As I told you last night, it's like a flower bud. The petals are closed. Here now it is opening. The flower is opening up, and three petals appear of each flower. One is the flower of doom. The other is the flower of salvation. فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى وَاتَّقَى وَصَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى فَسَنُ يَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى Three characteristics, three qualities. If somebody has these three, he goes to salvation and success. 
And if somebody has the opposite of these three, وَأَمَّا مَنْ بَخِلَ وَاسْتَغْنَ وَكَذَّبَ بِالْحُسْنَ فَسَنُ يَسْرُهُ لِلْعُسْرَ Very beautiful. Three. Three verses three. أَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى As for him who gives his wealth in charity. This is the most fundamental, most fundamental, most fundamental. In Surah Al-Balad, we saw this is the narrow, you know, passage, narrow valley which you have to cross. This is the bottleneck. فَلَقْتَحَ مَا الْعَقَبَةَ وَبَعَدْرَاكَ مَا الْعَقَبَةَ فَكُّ رَقَبَةَ أَوْ اِتْعَامٌ فِي يَوْمٍ زِي مَسْغَبَةَ يَتْرِمًا زَا مَقْرَبَ أَوْ مِسْكِينًا زَا مَتْرَبَةَ سُمَّ كَانَ مِنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَوَاسُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَتَوَاسُوا بِالْمَرْحَبَةَ So same is here. If you have this quality that you can spend your money, your wealth for the poor, the needy, the destitute, the hungry, for relieving pain of somebody, number one. Number two, وَالتَّقَى Now the translation you will find and who is God fearing but this is not correct here. But the basic meaning of taqwa taqa yaqi waqa yaqi means to save yourself waqa yaqi waqina azab an-nar oh allah save us from the punishment of the fire te waqina azab an-nar if taqa bab iftal and it becomes ittiqa means to save yourself taqwa means saving yourself saving yourself from the displeasure of allah Saving yourself from the wrath of Allah. Saving yourself from the fire of hell. All this is taqwa. You are saving yourself. But this saving is based on a moral sense within human beings. Alhamaha fujuraha wa taqwaha. You have a moral sense in you. A moral law according to Kant, you know. He said there are two proofs of the existence of God. The starry heavens above and the moral law within. This moral law. We read this last night. This moral law. فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَخْوَاهَا وَنَفْسِمْ وَمَا سَوَّاهَا فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَخْوَاهَا This knowledge and this distinguishing, this faculty, this ability to distinguish this is good, this is bad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has endued each human soul. So if this moral sense is active and this moral sense is active and alive, so he himself shuns away from evil, tries to do whatever he can do, good. This is the basic meaning. فَأَمَّا مَنْ عَطَى Number one, وَالتَّقَى Number three, وَصَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى This is on top. And then he truthfully testifies to whatever is good. This is the third faculty. You should be ready to accept anything. When somebody presents you something and you think it's good, accept it. Somebody says, brother, you are wrong here. What you are doing or what you believe is wrong. Now you argue with him. And during this argument, you come to feel his, his, what he is saying is correct. Now jump at it, accept it. Now if you feel, oh, then I will be defeated. So, so I am no, not going to give in. This ta'asub. Zid. This closes the door of goodness for you. But if all these three basic qualities are there, you are saved from the love of wealth. So that eta, you are giving, you are spending your wealth for the benefit of fellow human beings. 
This point you have made. If all these three faculties are joined in a human personality, he becomes Siddiq. Note it. We have read in Surah Al Nisa, "Wama yutri Allah wa Rasul, faulaik ma al lazina an am Allahu alayhi min al Nabiyina wa Siddiqina wa Shuhada wa Salihin." Four levels of people who are bunam alehim, who are blessed by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Topmost ambia. Number two, Siddiqin. Number three, Shuhada. Number four, the righteous, common righteous believers. They don't have any special achievement, but they are righteous, God fearing, doing good deeds. But no extra achievement. But if somebody rises, there is a level of shahada. Higher up is siddiqin, and next to siddiqin is nabuwa. This last one is closed. Even before it was God given, not it could be attained. It couldn't be attained by your effort. It was wahabi, not kasmi. But. The remaining two are there, open to you, and these remaining two, if you want to have an insight, because in Surah Al-Hadid also we read, "Baladin amanu billahi wa rasulhi ulai ka humus siddiqun wa shohadao in the Rabbi." These two levels are mentioned over there also. They refer to two types of psychological build of the personalities. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has made different, you know, aptitudes. Some people in the modern psychology, which they call them the introverts, always thoughtful, thinking. Then they have good sentiments. They would like to be alone, not in the company. Alone to themselves. They are not very active. They are not visible, running and going there or going here. Not very talkative. Introverts inside them. As Iqbal says, "Apne man mein doob kar paaja suraage zindagi." They are diving deep into their own selves. And the other is the extroverts. Their attention is toward the outside world. Enjoying, seeing, going here, going there, talking in the company. They are very, you know, very comfortable in the company. But when they are alone, they feel uncomfortable. And but they are active because they are extroverts. So the first category from this come up the Siddiqin. Abu Bakr was the Siddiq Akbar. Osman Ghani. But the second Siddiq, this is a category. But the second category, who fail at the third level, Sadda Kabil Husna. This third quality is not very deep in them, so they take time. They take their time to understand. Omar took six years to understand what Muhammad is saying. Hamza took six years, but they were active. They were wrestlers. They were fighters. When they entered the fold of Islam, Islam got strengthened. So these are shohada, more active, visible, more effective. But closer to the ambiya are the siddiqi. That is why. Imam Razi has said that this surah 
is the surah of Abu Bakr. And the next surah of Duha and Inshira, they are the surahs of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Surah Al-Layl, surah Abu Bakr. Surah Al-Duha, surah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So these three qualities. فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى وَاتَّقَى وَصَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى We shall gradually make him more and more able and suitable to reach the place of greatest ease and that is the garden of paradise. If you have these three qualities, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take you gradually, 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 nearer, 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 nearer to the garden of paradise. But if you have the three opposite qualities, whosoever is miserly, he loves wealth more than anything. Vastana. And he pays no care. La ubali. Fala ubali. I don't care. They don't feel for others. They have taunted on somebody. And you don't think that, they, that I have hurt his feelings. No. What to me? I don't care. <laughs> All these type of people. The reverse of attaqa. The moral law is very weak within themselves. And number three, top of that, وَكَزَّبَ بِالْحُسْنَةِ when something good, some truth is presented before them, they belie it. Although their heart has accepted, it is correct. In their hearts they believed. But with their tongues, they belied. So this is the, just the opposite. Whosoever has all these three is the worst of the people. And the model of this character in that Arabian society of the time of Muhammad sallallahu society of Mecca was Abu Lahab. The top there is Abu Bakr. The top there is Abu Lahab. In between you will have grades. Grades of the believers, grades of the disbelievers. Among the disbelievers were Abu Jahl, but Abu Jahl was not miserly. This was not him. He's about that. We shall read that surah, which we may call the surah of Abu Jahl. But he was he didn't have that moral law. Number two, he didn't have the ability to accept the truth when it comes to him. So he failed. But he was not miserly. So you will find others between these two extremes. So you will find in this surah two words, Ataqa and Ashqa. Ataqa, topmost muttaqi. Ashqa, the lowest wicked, the lowest in wickedness. Whosoever has these three qualities, we shall gradually make him more able and suitable to reach the place of greatest distress, that is the fire of hell. And his wealth shall not be able to avail him of anything when he will be thrown headlong into the hell. Inna alayna dal huda. Verily, it is our responsibility to show the path. To give guidance is our responsibility. And we discussed three levels of this guidance. One is the instinctive guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to everything. The ant knows how she has to live. How she has to feed herself. The bee, the, the honey bee knows everything. How 
she has to go to the flowers and collect and suck you know and then how to deposit the honey this is guidance oh allah annahl allah sent revelation or wahi to the honey bee so instincts they are also guidance man has also instincts there is the guidance number 2 then allah subhanahu wa taala has bestowed upon man the ability that he can differentiate by himself between evil and good fal hamaha fujuraha wa taqwa with these two things we have come in this world we have come here not blind allah has given us these two faculties but then the final guidance comes through the word of allah which is transmitted to humanity through number 1 the rasul e malak to a chosen person from among the human beings rasul e bashar and that is the link of risala and this is the final guidance in alaina lal huda yes this is our duty wa inna lana lal akhirata wal ula but then we hold the total authority of akhira as well as the ula the hereafter as well as this world we don't share our authority with anybody else this world is running according to our command and we shall judge people on the day of judgment liman al mulku al yawm lillah al wahid al qahhar so fanzar tukum naran talasa now the prophet is saying sallallahu alaihi wasallam so my community my people i have warned you of the fire of flames la yasla illa al ashqa none will enter it but the most wretched why the most wretched the highest level of guidance has been completed on muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so those people who are not accepting it even from muhammad they are the worst sharul bariya allazi kazzaba wa tawalla who belies the truth and turns away wasa yajannabu hal atqa far removed from it will be the most cautious god fearing and conscientious person and who is he abu bakr atqa allazi yuti ma lahu yatazakka who goes on giving his wealth to purify his self qad aflaha man zakkaha he spent everything his capital when he accepted iman on the call of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam 40000 dinars he spent everything each and every penny and when he was going for hijra accompanying muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam whatever was there in the home he took left nothing for his family the father he was blind person abu kahafa he embraced islam only after the victory of bakka he came asked the grand daughters aisha and asma rasi allah taala anhuma has abu bakar gone yes baba jan has he left something yes and they gathered some pebbles you know in a in a handkerchief and said yes this this is the this is the money that he has left and he you know because he was blind touched with the hands okay but there was not a single penny left all the money he had already spent purchasing the slaves who embraced islam and were being tortured one by one six and whatever price their masters demanded he paid bilal was number 1 abu fakih number 2 zunaira a concubine and so on allazi yuti malahu yatazakka wa ma li ahadin indahu bi ni'matin tujza 
and it is not in recompense for a favor done to him by anyone. If he is doing some goods to somebody, not because he had done some good to him. No, no. He doesn't have any burden of any good done to him by anybody else, which he has to repay. No, no. He is spending all this for nothing but to get to seeking the pleasure of his Lord, the Most High. And definitely he will be pleased. Now this goes both ways. He who Allah will be pleased and also he will be pleased. رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه now the third surah of that subgroup. Surah Al-Duha. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Al-Duha wa Layli iza saja ma wadda'aka rabbuka wa ma qala. Walal akhiratu khayrun laka min al-ula wa la sawfa yu'tika rabbuka fatarda. Sadaqallahu al-Azim. This surah has an event behind it in the background. That is, when the wahi started coming to Prophet ﷺ, after a number of wahis, then there was a sudden cessation of wahi. Jibreel is not coming. And Muhammad ﷺ, till that time, had developed such an intense love for wahi. He became dejected, sorrowful. Let me use the modern word depressed. And this depression of his reached the level of suicide. Suicidal tendencies. Even today they say this is the biggest sign of depression. If depression reaches that level then it must be treated. Otherwise shorter than that go on with it. You can go on continue. He himself says, several times this idea crossed my mind. I should mount, ascend a mountain and throw myself down. So much grieved. What has happened? Allah has become angry with me. I have offended him. Has he left me? There is a saying in Persian, Ishqasto hazar bad gumani. When there is love, then you wish him soon become suspicious. Maybe my beloved is angry with me. The more you love, the more is this possibility. So that was the condition in which this surah came. It is said that Umm Jamil, the aunt, paternal aunt of, no, yes, yes, paternal, met the wife of Abu Lahab. She said, Oh Muhammad, it seems your Saturn has left you. She was rejoicing. Now he has to, to add injury to insult, insult to injury. He, was, he had to listen to these things also. In that condition now this surah is coming. And these two surahs, Suratul Duha and Suratul Inshira, they have been fully understood only by the people whom we know whom we call the mystics, the Sufya, although I don't like this term, they have understood these feelings within you. And they are, in these two surahs, Allah is talking to his, with his messenger at a very, very personal level, very personal, very close, by the morning brightness. And by the night when it is still and calm. Your Lord has not forsaken you, nor is he displeased. Now the oaths and what is the collection between what is the muqsam alayh, on what the oath has been taken. Oh Muhammad, you see, there is a difference between night and day. But both are essential. Can anybody say that night is not necessary? This life in this world would cease to exist. 
day is also necessary night is also necessary so the coming of e is also necessary and some pauses and some delays and some cessation is also necessary so that you develop now there is people who have some creative role in the world creative role to create something new they have this experience at times they say mood off hai but what is this mood off even they can't explain at times they are very active at times there is inshara and at times it is inqibaz as if something you know has shrunk in your chest or as if your chest has widened these cycles normally go on among the more intelligent people but you know the cycle if it remains within certain limits it's okay if the amplitude increases then it is disease mental disease depression and many maniac activity going to the top mania and this depression but you know in the working of this world you have to have these two ghalib says now i apologize to brothers who don't know urdu especially urdu of ghalib rukti hai meri taba to hoti hai rawa aur after each cessation internal cessation when i come out of that inqibaz or depression now i have a fresh activity enhanced activity my taba becomes very you know active rukti hai meri but there is a time when i feel this some stop something has stopped i can't say i can't say poetry something has stopped in me but then suddenly now when i say then that is the best poetry so this is the wisdom of this cessation وقت دوحا و لیلی از آسجا ما و دعا کر ابو کا و ما قلا this temporary cessation of وحی doesn't mean that your lord has forsaken you or he has been displeased with you no 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 ولا الآخرة تو خیر اللہ کا من الاولا now these words are also denoting to the same phenomenon آخرة اولا آخرة اولا with every cycle the coming cycle will be much better for you than the preceding and the final the akhirah the hereafter will be much 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 more better for you than this this world so it can be it has been translated in both ways every coming moment of your life will be better for you than the preceding one and the final future and that is of hereafter is surely very 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 much better than this world wala sawfa yurti ka rabbu ka fatarna and very soon your lord will give you all and every good in such an abundance that you shall be well pleased wala tamnun tastaksir in suratul muddassir continue your struggle don't be disheartened don't be disappointed seeing to the results considering the response of the society Don't be disappointed. Continue your struggle. Wala tabnun tastaksir. The same thing. Wala sawfa yurti ka rabbu ka fatarba. And now in three ayat of this surah, three very important features of the life of the Prophet before the start of Wahi. Alam yajid ka yatiman faawa. Look to your past. O oh, my beloved servant and bondsman, look to your past. Did he not find you an orphan, and then gave you shelter? You were born after the death of your father. First shelter was the mother. Second was the grandfather, Abdul Muttalib. Third was the uncle Zubair. Very few people know. 
that between Abu Talib and Abdul Muttalib, there was the elder son, Zubair. Then when he also died, then you know, the guardian was Abu Talib. So he gave you most kind, most loving. All cared for you. All loved you. Alam yajid ka yatiman fa'awa. وَوَجَدَكَ ضَالًا فَهَدَا And found you in search of guidance. Dal means someone who is still searching for the guidance, searching for the truth, seeking the truth. Or someone who was on the right path, but by only mistake he has gone wrong. Not due to any bad intentions. In Surah Al-Fatiha we have غَيْرِ الْمَغْدُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَضْضَالِينَ Al-Magdubi alayhim are those who due to their bad intentions they turned to the wrong paths. So they had the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over them. And the most glaring example from among the people of the book are the Jews. But the other were the Christians. Their intention was not wrong. وَرَحْبَانِيَةَ لِبْتَدَعُوهَا مَا كَتَبْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ إِلَّا بْتِغَارِ الْوَانِ اللَّهِ It was excessive virtue in them. Excessive virtue. That took the form of Rahbaniya. So they are ضَالِّين not مَغْدُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ So ضَال means a person who either by mistake has come on the wrong path. Not due to any bad intentions. Or he is still searching for the path for the right way. And Dal in Arabia, this term is applied to a person who is in extreme love for someone. وَوَجَدَكَ ضَالًا فَهَدَى And he found you. He was in search of truth. What far you, you were going to the cave of Hira? Staying there for several nights and days? What far? He didn't belong to any religious group. He was neither, neither born a Jew or a Christian. And you know this idolatry and worship of idols, absolutely it was impossible. Repugnant to him from the very beginning. So what was he doing over there? Intense thought, meditation, contemplation. What is this? What is this universe? Who am I? Where from have I come? Where am I heading? What is wrong? What is correct? And why is this injustice in this world? Oppression? Why this exploitation? Why these inequalities? What? All this thought of a person having a deep, psych deep philosophical you know, mind and at the same time very Intensely right minded person. What is this? So then we, we found you searching for the truth and good. And then we guided you, and our angel came to you, and the revelation started. And number three, chronologically, it was prior to this. But this is the rhythm of the surah by which you know the sequence is changed. And he found you poor, destitute. So he enriched you. From the very beginning, he was very poor. Abu Talib was a very poor person. And Muhammad had to work as a laborer to support him. He was, you know, tending the goats and sheep of Arabs, of the Makki Karshi people going out, working hard. And then when he was of some age, then he was working for some rich men as an employee, some rich trader. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened the gate for him. The richest woman of Makkah and the noblest woman of Makkah, Khadija, he came to know of the virtues and qualities of Muhammad. 
He tried him. She tried him. He took a caravan of hers to Syria, came back. And she sent with him a slave of his, most confident, to watch him. See, his dealing and the report that he rec she received. Then, you know, she was tempted to offer herself to be married to Muhammad sallallahu Muhammad could never think of it. Many a chieftains, you know, of Quraysh had tried to marry her and she had refused. No. And now the proposal came from Khadija, radiallahu ta'ala anha. And then Khadija put all her wealth at the disposal of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You spend it wherever you like. I found a story in the Tafsir al-Kabir of Imam Razi that once the Prophet came, he had gone out and they came back, but he was very much sorrowful and grieved and he laid, laid down, taking a blanket, something over him. Khadija asked, what's the matter? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, I went out from Makkah and in that valley I found there is a tribe who have nothing to eat, no clothings, very poor, very poor, destitute people. And I don't have anything with which I can help you, help them. She said, okay, get up and call such and such and such and persons of the Quraysh, call them. Muhammad went, sallallahu alayhi wa brought them. In the meantime, she had made a heap of the golden coins, so much high that when Muhammad sat behind it, it covered him. And then he sa she said, all of you should be witnesses. I give all this to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is free to spend it anywhere he likes. He found you destitute, poor, needy. And he made you and wished you. So now, three commands. As for the orphan, don't oppress him. And as for the beggar, or the questioner, sail, two meanings. Somebody comes to ask a question from you. He is also a beggar, beggar of knowledge. Somebody is asking for some dollars or some money. He is a beggar. But don't be harsh to any questioner, any beggar. Sail of Allah. And as for the blessings of your Lord that have come to you, Proclaim them. Announce them publicly. Now this has a vast meaning, you know. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with, you should say, my Allah has blessed me with this thing. My God has blessed me with this thing. That is why the Prophet used to say, although he was very humble, very humble, very humble, no haughtiness ever touched him. Ana Sayyidu Wulde Adam Bala Fakhr. But he had to say this. I am the Sardar or the chief of all the progeny of Adam. But I am not saying it with Fakhr. No. And so on. Nusir to bin Rob. Uti to Jawam ul Kalim. And so many things of that type. And the second meaning is that the biggest blessing on you is this Quran. You convey it, <coughs> proclaim it from the rooftop. Let it be known to the people. Propagate it. Wamma bi ni'mati rabbika fahadis. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Quran al-Azim. ونفعني وإياكم بالآيات وذكر الحكيم